Hello there, Pastor Reed of Online Bible Church. Thank you for joining me. We're going to do a Bible review. Now, I was on Amazon yesterday, and I came across this, and so I ordered it, and it came today. One day overnight shipping. What a wonderful thing. This is the Thomas Nelson Open Bible. Now, I am not very familiar with this. I did see a review that... Um, Pastor Steve Waldron of New Life Albany um, had posted, so he kind of goes into this a little bit, but I'd never actually heard of the Open Bible before, and so we're going to look at this together and see if we can figure out um, how to use it and what what's in it. Um, the box, we're going to look at the back here. Features include easy to navigate topical index with 50,000 entries showing the connections between 8,000 names, places, concepts, events, and doctrines. Thomas Nelson's complete cross reference system with over 72,000 cross references located in the center column. So it's going to be a center column reference Bible. Interactive book introductions and outlines providing historical context, themes, and verse relationships within scripture, a newly designed visual survey of the Bible displaying an easy to follow overview of scriptures, components, and genres. Thomas Nelson's KJV concordance over 60 pages with keywords, proper names, and phrases, clear and readable nine point type font in Thomas Nelson's KJV comfort print. More features, how to study the Bible. The Scarlet Thread of Redemption, Harmony of the Gospels, Prophecies of the Messiah, the Miracles of Jesus Christ, the Parables of Jesus Christ, Teaching and Illustrations of Christ, Guide for the Christian Worker, Laws of the Bible, One Year Reading Plan, and Full Color Maps. So let's open this up and have a look. It is a nice clamshell box. You open it up and you get a nice brown, and this is a genuine leather edition. I think I saw that it came, you can get it in hardback, you can get it, uh, there's other options available. I got the brown one. Um, and so this is what it looks like. The Spine, the Open Bible, KJV. Uh, that must be Thomas Nelson's logo, I think. Must be, I don't know. Um, so very nice. Uh, gold gilded edging all the way around um not decorative headbands and tail bands but you'll see you get three ribbon markers which is kind of cool now i'm not a huge ribbon marker fan myself i like one or at the most two three i guess is not bad so anyway let's open this up and see what we've got inside of this open bible so we open it up now, I have not broken this Bible in yet. I, it just came in the box today, and I haven't really had a chance to look at it. So we're going to look at this together. So it's got a nice presentation page, and it is on a glossy paper. Some presentation pages are on cardstock with a matte finish. This one is on a glossy finish. The KJV Open Bible. Welcome to the Open Bible, including Thomas Nelson's most extensive and complete reference system. And so this gives you an introduction to this Bible, what you would use it for, what it has, what it offers, a list of contributors to the study aids, quite a few names there, some I recognize, others I don't, uh, Kenneth Boa I've heard of. Um, C.M. Ward, I've heard of. Um, hmm. Contents. So it's got all the books of the Bible listed here. Old Testament, New Testament. Um, and not only that, but it gives you page numbers too, which is nice. Uh, does have the epistle dedicatory. Very nice looking. Special abbreviations. It has a list of abbreviations. 
that I guess are used throughout this Bible. How to study the Bible. So this is something that you can read and it gives you um, uh, how they recommend that you study the Bible. Um, personal Bible study, devotional bi Bible study, uh, study for Bible knowledge, uh, family Bible study, principles of Bible interpretation, um, the Christian's Guide to the New Life. Now, my understanding is this particular Bible is um, very handy, especially if you're a new Christian. This uh, gives you a, a bit of an introduction to the Christian faith, um, to, uh, to being born again, what, uh, what the new life, the new birth is, as well as it kind of gives you a walk through the Bible. Uh, knowing God's Word, understanding God's being. So it kind of gives you a bit of an overview for maybe a new convert um, on who God is and uh, about the Bible. Uh, beginning the new life, growing in the new life, facing problems in the new life. Um, and it's got some scriptures there that you can reference. Um, very nice. Nelson's Topical Index to the Bible. Now, according to Pastor Steve Waldron, this is where this Bible really shines, is the Topical Index. And it has many, many, many pages. It's um, a Topical Index to the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And apparently this is quite extensive. Um, let's just look and see how many pages this is. Okay, so it looks like it takes up that much. So that's quite a large uh, topical index. Now, this is not a concordance. A concordance is a list of uh, verses that contain a specific word. In this topical index, the word itself does not have to appear, but it does talk about that thing. Like, for example, um, let's look up ability right here. Well, in a concordance, if you look up the word ability, it will show you the verses that contain the word ability. Whereas this topical uh, index um, lists every verse that talks about ability, even though it doesn't mention the actual word. So it is quite an extensive um, thing right here in the front. Um, and it looks like it's it would be very helpful to a new convert or to an old Christian um, that might want to study a specific topic. Um, I could probably see myself using this um, in my preparing for study and preparing for uh, sermons. I could definitely see myself using this to help me with that. Um, so it is quite an extensive... Um, quite an extensive index. Read your Bible through in a year, and it gives you a guide of how to do that. I'm not exactly sure personally how I feel about reading your Bible through in a year plans. Um, I like the idea if you if that's your goal to read the Bible through in a year, but when you're reading the Bible, my opinion is that you need to be reading it to read it and to understand it, not. Um, as a, I got to get through this so I can finish the whole Bible in a year. I think that kind of uh, is the wrong motivation to read the Bible. I think we need to read the Bible because we want to uh, communicate with God, and we communicate with God through prayer. God communicates with us through his word, through the Bible, um, and so I think we should be reading and studying it to see what God has to say to us and not necessarily, oh, I got to get this done. I got to read this. 
as kind of like a, a have to do rather than a want to do. But that's my opinion. That's my opinion. So, the Old Testament. And one thing that this Bible really um, is known for is the introductions. It gives a very extensive introduction to each book. And also, not only that, but a good um, outline of things that happen in that particular book. Now, let's have a look at this center column reference. So this is what a typical page would look like. You've got um, uh, two columns, center column reference, and you do have some uh, notes in the bottom. Now, it looks like to me that there are not a huge number of actual notes. In Genesis, there's a few here. In fact, here it takes up most of the page. But from what I see here, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of pages that don't have any notes on the bottom. So if you're looking for a Bible with a lot of commentary and a lot of notes, it doesn't look like this one is for you. Um, it does have quite an impressive amount of center column references, but again, not a whole lot of notes on the bottom. There's there, there are several scattered throughout the Bible from the looks of it, but um, more often than not, there's no uh, note on the bottom. And so we're going to go and look again, just random flipping to, we have the introduction to Joshua. And again, the outline of things that happen within that book. Let's go in between the Testaments, because I've heard that there are some really good resources in between Malachi and Matthew. So let's have a look and see what's here. So, Malachi ends here. And right on the next page, you get a title page for a visual survey of the Bible. And it gives you a little introduction to what exactly this is. And now if you're a visual, visual learner like me, who appreciates timelines, and, and rather than just reading it to actually see it, um, this is good. So this is a survey of the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. Um, along the bottom, it looks like there's a timeline. Now, this Bible is very, very big, it looks like, on the history of Israel. So it looks like here we've got the history of the early world, uh, pre-flood, 4000 BC. So it's pretty conservative with its dating. Um uh, so it looks like it's taking uh, Bishop Usher's dating. Um, so it's got early history of the world, um, early history of Israel, history of the Messiah, uh, history of the early church. So it's broken it up into kind of dispensations, which is good. Here we have the history of the early world. It's got uh, charts and, and uh, ages of the patriarch, longevity in years. Remember, back in the very, very early history, back especially before the flood, people were living a long time. Uh, Methuselah, I believe, was the, young, or the oldest man. He lived the longest, and he was 969 years old when he died. And so this kind of gives you a little bit of a... Uh, a graph of how long these people were living before the flood. And then you can see how it, um, how it, that lifespan dropped off. History of Israel. So we get a little timeline here, charts, a map of the Exodus, it looks like. Is this the map of the Exodus? No, it's showing 
Joseph sold into slavery in Egypt. Abraham's call. Okay, so this is um, just kind of uh, uh, where they traveled. I don't think that's the actual Exodus. History of Israel again, talking about the land. The Ten Commandments, Judges, a case study in disobedience. There's actually quite a lot in here. Uh, History of Israel, the Kingdom. So that's kind of cool. The Poetic Books, The Heart of the Jews. So this is talking about... Um, Job, uh, Moses, Dave. So it's got a timeline along the top here. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. So it's got uh, information about those books, the themes. Um, the path to true success. Question, what is wisdom? So it looks like there's some questions and answers here. Uh, next page. Has oh, two stuck together. I did again. I didn't break in this Bible yet, so pages are kind of sticking together. Uh, the prophetic books. So we've got uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the major prophets: Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The minor prophets: Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah, Zephaniah, and Malachi. And uh, the themes of each one of those books. Next page, we have History of Israel, the Remnant, Bridging the Testaments. That's good to know about things that happened in between the Testaments. I know in the Thompson chain, there's that uh, 400 silent years, and it shows the things that happened in between the Testament. The life of Christ, and this has the Gospels compared and contrasted. Um, Christ's public ministry, a timeline here on the bottom. A map of uh, places that were significant in the life of Christ. The next page is the history of the early church, the book of Acts in overview. And then a map here that shows, um, it looks like it has a lot to do with Paul, his um, missionary journeys and Paul's arrest. You can see all that in the map. The writings of the early church. So I like this timeline. It goes from Peter, focus on Peter, uh, focus on Paul, uh, focus on John. Um, so it's got a timeline of when these were written. Um, and of course, John is still prophetic because we're not in Revelation yet. Um, so this kind of gives you a nice timeline things that are happening or things that happened and will happen. Uh, and then the themes of the New Testament letters. So Paul's letter to churches, Paul's letter to, to people, and letters from others. Again, it's got the theme. That's actually really cool. I like that. And then we're into the New Testament. And just to give you what a New Testament page looks like. Here's the introduction to Matthew. So again, um, quite an extensive introduction. The book of Matthew, the author of Matthew, the time of Matthew, uh, the Christ of Matthew, keys to Matthew, survey of Matthew, outline of Matthew. Oh, it's quite a lengthy outline of Matthew. Three pages. 
and this is what Matthew looks like, and it looks like it is red letter. So let's kind of see what the red letter looks like. It's very nice, readable, uh, kind of a deep red. Sometimes you get red and it's orange, but no, this looks like a nice deep red. So let's go to the very back and see what we have um, after Revelation. So right after Revelation, we get a harmony of the Gospels. I always like the harmony of the Gospels because it shows you... Oh, and this is a very, very extensive harmony of the Gospel. Rather than talking about just major things. This goes on for several pages, actually. There's the Harmony of the Gospels continued. So the Harmony of the Gospels, I've seen them, usually they're just on like one, maybe two pages, but this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages of Harmony of the Gospels. That's the most I've ever seen. The Jewish calendar. The Jewish day. The first watch, second watch, third watch, so on and so forth. So if you're reading something and you want to reference what that means, come to the back and see. The Jewish feasts. Table of monies, weights and measures. So there's a handy guide. A lot of Bibles do have that in there. Even the um, Westminster has that. So. And then on this page, we have the teachings and illustrations of Christ. So I'm assuming that everything in here uh, goes back to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The prophecies of the Messiah fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I really like this. Um, so the prophetic scripture in the Old Testament, um, the subject and where it was fulfilled. That's how we know the Bible is true. One of the big reasons why we know the Bible is true is because of the fulfilled prophecies. No other religion can claim a book that has fulfilled prophecy, only Christianity. The parables of Jesus Christ and the miracles of Jesus Christ. Uh, the laws of the Bible. So I'm assuming a lot of this is um, Law of Moses. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot, of, um, a lot of references to Numbers, Leviticus, Exodus, Deuteronomy. But I am seeing some... Uh, uh, I am seeing, where did I see that? First Timothy, yeah, so it's, it's also talking about Paul's doctrines as well, but a lot of it, most of it is um, Law of Moses. Between the Testaments, and this is a really, looks like it's a really in-depth study on things that happened in between the Testaments. The Maccabean Revolt, uh, the Romans, the Jewish sects, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Apocrypha. Oh, here's a chronology. So I'm assuming that is, it goes from 612 BC to 37 BC. So this looks like a chronology of what happens in between the Testaments. The Apocrypha. Why Protestants reject the Apocrypha? The books commonly termed Apocrypha are. So it's got a lengthy um, study on the Apocrypha and what it is and why it's not in the King James Bible. A Guide to Christian Workers. What is that about? Commission, compassion. So I guess if you're a pastor or you're involved in gospel work or missions work or 
uh, something like that. This would definitely be very uh, handy for you, or even something like a Sunday school teacher. Prayers of the Bible. There's a lot of stuff in here. The prayers of the Bible. And then we have the KJV Concordance. Let's see how big this concordance is. So this is the concordance. So that's, uh, that's fairly respectable. Now, keep in mind, there is that gigantic um, uh, topical index in the front of the Bible, too. And not only that, but it gives you a, a concordance that's quite, uh, quite good as well. Let's look at the maps. The World of the Patriarchs. Now, these are the uh, Thomas Nelson maps. So you'll see these similar maps in things like the Premier Study Bible. Um, Exodus. I do not like how Thomas Nelson does not show the Exodus going through the Red Sea, when clearly it teaches in Scripture that there was a miracle. God parted the Red Sea for them. I don't know why Bible maps, most Bible maps, don't show that. But anyway, we got more maps. Jesus' ministry. It's got a good uh, good look at the things that Jesus was doing in his ministry and where they occurred. Paul's missionary journeys. They've got all of Paul's missionary journeys in one map. I've seen them broken up into one map for the first, another map for the second, another one for the third, but they've got it all in one. Uh, Jerusalem in the time of Jesus. So these maps look very similar to the premier study Bible. So that is the KJV Thomas Nelson Open Bible. Do I recommend it? Yes. Now, I haven't had a chance to read it, so I can't vouch for everything in it and how doctrinally sound it is, but from what I have seen, it looks pretty good. And I would especially... Um, recommend this to uh, a person who's newer to the faith, somebody who wants to learn God's Word, somebody that wants to learn um, about these things and wants to learn about uh, the books of the Bible and, and how to navigate the Bible. So I do recommend this. It's a very nice Bible. Feels good. It's genuine leather. It is paced down. It's not, uh, there's no stitching around it. But um, that's quite a nice looking spine, very simple. Um, so that is the Thomas Nelson um, Open Bible. Now I did order a few other Bibles. They will probably be here this week and into next week. So we will look at those when they come in. And until next time, God bless.